Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I am actually going to start my day off with actually feeding Abasuku. And trust me, even though Abasuku is a tame, taming animal, the truth is, is it's still fierce when it comes to eating. Hey, no, let go of the ball. Let go of the ball. Let go of the ball. Let go. Here you go. Here you go. No, 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 no. Stay in your cage. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Hey, hey, hey. There you go. Woo! I tell you what. That is a high energy animal for sure. And although she's absolutely amazing and tame, when she sees that ball, she knows it's food. You can see she was going after the ball more than she was going after the food. I'm gonna go ahead and just shut this case because when she's done, she's gonna be ready for her next animal for sure. And you can see we really vary things up when it comes to monitors. We'll do chicken, we'll do fish, we'll do beef. Sometimes we want whole animals like frozen rodents because it's really high in calcium and good for them. Variety is key and you can see Habasuku, she is ready. She's like, come on daddy, I see that ball down there. I better hide this Paul, we're gonna have an absolutely amazing day. What do you say we push our problems aside for the next 15 minutes, have an amazing day together. You guys know that I love my poison dart frogs. I used to feed them all the time in the vlog. These electric blues here are ridiculous. These are Azurus. Now, a lot of people will ask like, you know, why do you have poisonous animals or something like that? And a lot of people even think that if you handle a poison dart frog that it could potentially hurt you. The truth is all frogs and toads do have a toxin, but what happens with a lot of the dendrobatids, which are poison dart frogs, is the fact that the, what they're eating in the wild will be like high in folic acid and other things, which actually makes them a little toxic with the secretion. But the truth is in captivity these guys are eating fruit flies and there's really no acids in there Folic acids and stuff like that is gonna make it so yes They probably have a little bit of toxin But the truth is is why we don't handle them is because of the oils on our hand actually will hurt the frog Not the other way around if I was to eat one of these Maybe I'd get a little upset stomach or something like that But it's no big deal whereas in the wild certain species that are eating certain types of bugs will actually be pretty toxic And that's when the natives would literally roll their darts in the secretion of a dart frog and actually use it to hunt prey, hence the name poison dart frogs. But in captivity, no worries, really, we can harm them more than they can harm us. Oh, oh my like, god, what? that is crazy. And I'm like, to no, me. no, what? no, Eric Plushies. And then all of a sudden, everybody's like, I want an Eric Plushie. I want oh. an Eric Plushie. <laughs> Seriously, oh not oh gonna my happen. Gosh. I Good ended it. No, yeah, it got no. really weird and know. awkward, and I ended it. No, Dude, that we're is, not I, doing. Eric plushies might be a good idea. <laughs> I would be scared because then they can use we it like have, a voodoo doll. Exactly. Well, no, we exactly. Can, you know, we can have like kind of a little pool, like the pool string. Yeah. Oh my god. Like oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Get, dude. Oh my gosh. Ow. Uh, ow. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I think I'm hungry. Hungry. No. Let me know down in the comments. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments if you guys want an Eric plushie, maybe a little pull string. I think I think it's a brilliant no, idea. Not gonna I like it. I'm gonna keep on reminding you guys that next Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, is Black Friday. We always do a Black Friday sale over at BHB Reptiles. Everything is 20 to 50% off everything bhbreptiles.com make sure you check it out from midnight to midnight next friday black friday sale bhbreptiles.com i found earlier this week a couple slugs in this girl's cage and i'm super excited about them so these guys aren't actually like they don't have uh, mapped out genetics like there's not recessives and stuff like that to make it easy for breeding <laughs> Uh, you actually just have to try and pick what you think is gonna work out best and see what happens. So it's all line breeding. We call it polygenic. I'm super excited to see what comes out of these. These are both females from our Dracula line. I've got them paired up with a pretty nice red stripe male. It's not as nice as these guys. It's one we produced last year. I'm hoping since they have super nice stripes, the babies will be just as nice. So one thing that's kind of different about breeding these guys than uh, most of the other geckos I work with, like the leopard geckos, for example, you can just put a bunch of females together and they're usually fine. You'll rarely have fighting. With the gargoyles though, you can only do one female to one male. So that makes things a little bit more difficult. Even with one male and female, you have to watch for injuries. But if you've ever seen the skink breeding, the gargoyles are pretty much the same. The male come up, fight the female right here on the side and hold on to them. But uh, that's lizard breeding for you. So excited that we have merch for Christmas, guy. That's right, we have salt and pepper here. You can get yours at barcheckboys.com. Make sure they make great gifts and they're gonna guaranteed be there for Christmas. Actually, about the week before Christmas. Look at Casper, how absolutely incredible he's looking. But listen guys, if you're just more into the salt life and you just want a salt merch, that's completely fine. We have a bunch of different colors. I think it's gonna be the best Christmas gift that you give. I'm not really sure about that, but nevertheless, you can go to barcheckboys.com and get yours. And by the way, look at Daisy. She is looking so incredible. 
And if you live in a cold environment like I do, uh, there's hoodies. You can get hoodies in salt and pepper or salt, whichever you prefer. Again, I'll put a link in the description, barcheckboys.com. Pin it, comment right up top so you guys can go get it. Uh, they're only going to be available for the next maybe week and a half or so. So go ahead and get you some for sure. And uh, Merry Christmas. Ooh, what'd you? Well, we brought snacks. in snacks, but this one is specifically Space for you. Invaders. Oh, is that pickled onion? Have you had that? Have no, you had I this? haven't. I love pickled onion though. Well, then taste really? it. No. Taste it. Okay. Do this it. is dang aliens. Let's see them. Did you guys not like them? I, well, we hate them. This is weird. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I do when I open chips, no, it's like not a fine weird. wine. I it's like, like a the smell because you can tell whether it's gonna be bad or not. They're little aliens, <laughs> dude. They're little aliens. Tell me what you think. Those are great. <laughs> really? These are so good. Really? Good. All right. Really? Oh, I can sit my big chair. Why am I not surprised that yeah. you like them? With a cold <laughs> pop and really? some space aliens. Like all of that is hitting you. You the like onion, it? Onion. It's got that little hint of dill <laughs> in there. <laughs> Okay. All right. It okay. accents it so well. I, I'm All not right. surprised. I'm yeah, surprised. it's the best day ever. Okay, let's get it started. It's that time of year again. We're gonna start revamping all of our colubrids, okay? So we're gonna get these guys uh, brand new tubs, brand new cup rings, brand new bedding, uh, completely sterilized so everything's very clean for when they're in brumation next door. So I think there's about 240 animals that are going next door immediately. And we have some on the back burner that we're waiting to get the size, uh, get the food out of their system, etc. So let's get started. Okay, so just a small example. Uh, this is just kind of one of those things that rinse and repeat, I like to call it. You just keep doing the same thing over and over. So we're gonna lay all these tubs out. We've got them set up right in front of our racks here so we can get a count of how many high. So the next step is I'm gonna get some sandy chips. I'm gonna go along, I'm gonna put a nice uh, generous amount of bedding in all of these tubs. Then we'll get our new tubs, stack them on top, refill them, stack them on top, refill them. So we'll be doing this, you know, good uh, eight to 10 times. We wanna make sure we give a good amount of bedding so the snake can burrow or, you know, just have enough room in there to do what it wants when it's in brumation. You know, your, your regular corn snake, maybe it'll sit on top, but it could also go and bury itself underneath for that long sleep. Okay, awesome. So that's just a little taste of it, I would say, because we still have a ton more tubs to do. This place will be covered in sandy chips and tubs stacked up to here. So we'll see you guys next time and show you how the rest of it's done. So I told you guys I was gonna bring you on the entire journey of the expansion and uh, everything. So I'm gonna do a little sit down, just a uh, little you know, one-on-one -on -one here. It's basically uh, got some of the budgets done. You know, listen, I'm a business guy, so I wanna make sure I'm allocating the proper funds. So we had a budget, you know, what I thought it would cost. Cause we're using the similar people we did with the first Reptarium, right? So I had an idea what things cost. So I kind of budgeted out, figuring it's gonna probably balloon over 10 or 15%, just like any project. So everything other than the caging came in pretty close some stuff was a little lower some stuff's a little higher now keep in mind we haven't done anything yet we haven't even broke ground on anything it's all starting here in the next several days but guess what we uh, got the designs all done for some amazing enclosures and habitats for the new place big anaconda enclosure salt and pepper enclosure big rhino iguana enclosure bunch of big snake stuff it's gonna be absolutely incredible and um, the budget was uh, $49,000 over budget. So what I allocated to actually do it, uh, $49,000 above that. And that's before we started. So you know it's gonna balloon out because we're gonna add a few things, things are gonna change, there's gonna be some other stuff. And by the way, that's not with filtration, that's gonna be on additional on top of that, as well as some other install costs. Regardless, probably somewhere about fifty-two dollars to $55,000 over what I expected the caging or habitats to actually cost. Why am I telling you this? I don't know. I mean, I'm just telling you this. I, and and, and, and no, so now I'm in this position where I think I've got to do it, right? I mean, I, I can start to cut back and maybe not make it as grand as it is in the design, right? So I could say, ah, instead of going with a big water basin that's going to cost a ton of money or a big, you know, floor to ceiling glass enclosure for the anaconda, I could maybe make it a little less, you know, kind of extravagant. And I could certainly cut probably twenty-five dollars or $30,000 over that over budget by doing that. 
but then it's not really the vision I have, right? So I don't know, guys. I think that I'm just gonna do it. You know, I mean, yeah, it's not gonna be fun to spend the extra money, but again, it's gonna be amazing. I want a place that I, I want it to be exactly like my vision. I mean, really, the Reptarium here kind of came out exactly like I envisioned it, and I want this place to be even better than that, right? I mean, I got this thought in my mind and I wanted it to be, so let me know in the comments what you guys think. If, if you were me, would you go for it? And just say, hey, you know, it's gonna cost a bunch more, but hey, life goes on and you're happy and you can bring people in and they can be excited and, and blown away by it or do you think I should kind of scale back a little bit and maybe be a little bit more fiscally responsible but uh, I don't know I just wanted to give you the update I haven't done anything yet but uh, pretty sure this is going to cost a lot more than I thought I've been working my butt off down here getting everything ready I've been cleaning and organizing and setting everything up for the 2020 breeding season down here Brian lets me set up everything down here just how I like it so at least I'll be set up for the next breeding season so speaking of which let me show you some of the pairings that I'm really excited for so so this is one of the girls here. I actually didn't know that this was a morph when I first started here, but this is a super paint and they're so beautiful. Even the non-super form is ex extremely gorgeous. So this is one of my favorite males here. This is a cinnamon cypress and I would love to see what a cypress paint looks like. And if we can, a cinnamon cypress paint would be awesome. Since we're already over here, I'm gonna show you another male I'm super excited about. This is a cinnamon woma male and this girl is a beautiful chocolate pinstripe. How gorgeous would it be to have a cinnamon chocolate pinstripe Woma? They still have a whole bunch of work to do down here, but Eric has been helping me out a bunch and putting his time in down here, which is really handy because breeding season is right around the corner. So much stuff is moving along so quickly when it comes to the Reptarium. I mean, it's kind of a blur to be honest with you, but one of the things that we need to work on is the windows, obviously. Obviously it was the tattoo shops actually decoration at the window before and we only have two windows over here and then of course we have the two doors that we have to redo so basically what we're going to do is one window is going to be like this but with a different animal and i'm going to get with more in a minute and kind of decide what we're going to do we want the doors to be similar where we'll have a couple animals on this the reptarium stuff like that and then one of the windows is actually going to be much like this where you can see in i mean it's all condensated now but you can see into the tortoises where over there you're going to be able to see into the rhino iguana cage so uh, we have to design these out, get that order up, get those decals kind of put on so that we can start looking like the Reptarium. And then I think construction starts any day. That's what I need to do. Yeah. Right, do you have those stickers so we can talk about the window? I know you said you're gonna take the lead on that as far as what you wanna do. Cause we need what, we need two animals in the doors and then we need right. the one full we need and one then we need one. to decide what verbiage we want. I think Nova yeah, and this is, is a, a good yeah. one for like the biggest because that's yeah, a nice it's like, big... Like kind of like we did guac, like, but have Nova. I, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So, so, hey, yeah, Nova's a good one for sure. So that's um, for the big one. Then we yeah. need the two doors. And then what do you think? Because I think they're kind of cool and they might look good on the doors. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Would you think that they should be facing the I same was, way or go the I was going to say, I don't know if maybe we should impose one if you can flip it the other oh, way. Oh, you can totally you flip like it this. the other way, but I almost, you know, I've got two thoughts. I mean, maybe the other way would be cool or together would be cool, or if the entrance is that way, would should they both be that way? Okay, well, just think about it and tell me what you want, and then you're going to call them and see if we can get that started, like, Franco. Yep, I got the number, so. That'd be good, too, just so that, you know, now people aren't like, oh, there's a tattoo shop, you know what I mean? Let's just get the thing done, so. It'll look more uniform. Okay, cool. Excellent. Let me know what you decide. I like it. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Look how big Santana the Savannah Monitor is getting. This thing is huge. And this is going to be an animal that's definitely going to go next door as well. It's such a good handling animal. So absolutely sweet and adorable. And he is definitely growing up. Going to need a big habitat pretty soon. And again, we're going to be building one for him that he's going to absolutely love. So excited about this process. Every day that goes by that is closer just makes it more and more exciting. Looks like right now, sometime in February, we're going to need some help from you guys. If it anyone wants to come up and move a bunch of enclosures in sometimes in February I'll need your help I'll uh, uh, keep you updated on that as for now if you enjoyed this video can you do me a favor and smash that video right over there here's an entire playlist you can just roll through over on this side you can hit that subscribe button make sure to turn the post notification on have an absolutely wonderful day you better be kind to someone or I'll send Santana after you I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow